Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Bless. This is 15 Minutes with the Captains. I am Captain Amaziah. With me today, I have... Soldier Nathaniel. Soldier Nathaniel. And today, we're going to smash a Christian lie, a Christian stronghold, a Christian misinterpretation of the Bible, of Colossians 2, chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man judge you in meats. Meaning you could eat anything you want, you could celebrate anything you want, you could do any evil you want. Yes, I said evil. Okay? So, so let's get into it, matter of fact. Colossians 2 and 16, let's read it. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath day. So now, that's what Paul said. Don't let no man judge you in no meats, no drinks, no respect of a holy day. So Christians interpret that as you can eat what you want. You can't judge me for eating pork, the shrimp, the crab, the lobster. You can't, you can't judge me for not keeping biblical holidays, although I keep all the pagan holidays. You can't judge me for these things. Let's find out if Paul told the people to commit sin. 1 Corinthians 15 and 34. Let's start right there. Let's stick with Paul because a lot of Christians, they like to run to Paul. Okay? They run to Paul before they run to Christ. Okay? Let's see. 1 Corinthians 15 and 34. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 34. Awake to righteousness. What did Paul say? Awake to righteousness. So Paul said awake to righteousness. When you, read, when you read Deuteronomy 6 and 25, righteousness is keeping the law, as well as Romans chapter 8 and verse 4. Okay, we're not going to get it right now. We only got 15 minutes. So let's make it quick. Let's read it again. Awake to righteousness. Read on. And sin not. And what? Sin not. Paul said, don't commit sin. Wake up. Do not commit sin. Romans 3.31. Let's get a little more. Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? So Paul said, are we going to void out God's laws through faith in Christ? God forbid. Wait a minute. Paul said, hell no. We're not going to void the law. Okay? Read on. Yay. Yay. We, we establish the law. What did Paul say? We establish the law. Paul said we establish the law. Hold on. Romans 6 and 1. Romans chapter let's, 6. Let's get a little more. Verse 1. What shall we say then? What are we going to say then? Shall we continue in sin? Paul said, Paul said, Christians, Paul said this. Should we continue in sin? That grace may abound. Should we continue in sin? That that grace is going to keep going and going and going? God forbid. Paul said no. How shall we that are dead to sin? We're supposed to be dead to sin, meaning we're not committing the sin anymore. Live any longer therein. Or how are we going to live in the sin if, we, if we're supposed to be dead from the sin? Let's go to Colossians 3 and 5. Let's get one more. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members. So Paul says mortify, meaning kill these members inside you. Kill these lusts inside of you. Read. Mortify, therefore, your members, uh -huh. which are upon the earth. Uh -huh. Fornication. That's sin, brothers and sisters. Paul said mortify fornication. Get rid of fornication. Kill the fornication spirit. Uncleanliness. Uncleanness. Read. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection, homosexuality, those kind of affections. Paul said, kill that. That's sin. Go ahead. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence, evil sexual desires, sin. And covetousness. And covetous. Thou shalt not covet. That is sin, brothers and sisters. Which is idolatry. Idolatry is sin, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go back to Colossians 2, 16 once again. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. So did Paul say that the people can sin? No. Read. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Don't let no man judge you in meat. Or in drink. Or in drink. Or in respect of an holy day. Or in respect of a holy day. Or of the new moon. Or of the new moon. Or of the Sabbath days. Or of the Sabbath day. So now, 
If this isn't talking about you could commit sin, what is Paul talking about? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 37. Let's go. Now let's find out what is this, what is this um, judgment meats and offerings and drinks? Let's read. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. 37. 37. These are the feasts of the Lord. So now we're talking about the feasts of the Lord, the high holy days of the Lord. Read. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, uh -huh. to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. To do what? To, to offer. offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. These are to offer an offering by fire, an offering, an offering, an offering. Read on. A burnt offering. A burnt offering. And a meat offering. A meat offering. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. And drink offerings. And drink offerings, brothers and sisters. Everything upon his day. The Bible says everything upon his day. So for Sabbath days, there were certain sacrifices. For new moons, there were certain sacrifices. Let's get it, matter of fact. Numbers 28, and let's start at verse 1. Numbers chapter 28, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering, and my, my, my what? My offering. My offering, read. And my bread for my sacrifices. Uh huh. Made by fire. Uh huh. For a sweet savor unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. Jump to verse 9. And when? When is it? In their due season. In their due season, brother and sister. Read on verse 9. Verse 9. And on the Sabbath day. This, this is talking about the seventh day Sabbath. On the Sabbath day. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year. Two lambs of the first year on the Sabbath day. So if this particular day, here's the sacrifice and offering I want you to bring. Read. Without spot. Read. And two tenths deal of flour for a meat offering. Read. Mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. So there's a meat offering and a drink offering. Read. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath. That's the burnt offering of every Sabbath. This particular offering, you offer it every Sabbath. Read. Besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. So that was about the Sabbath day. Now let's go to the next verse. Verse 11. And in the beginnings of your month. In the beginnings of your month. What is that talking about? The new moon. That's the beginning of your month. Ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord. Uh-huh. Two young bullocks and one ram. Uh-huh. Seven lambs of the first year without spot. Jump to verse 14. Verse 14. And their drink offering shall be half and hen of wine unto bullock, unto a bullock. And the third part of an hen unto a ram. And a fourth part of an hen unto a lamb. Read. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. See that? So that's, that's, I just gave you two examples of offering, different offerings on different high holy days. Go back now. Colossians 2, 16 again. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. So what is that meat talking about? The, the meat offerings on a high holy day or a Sabbath day. Okay? On specific days, you had certain offerings you had to bring. So Paul is saying, don't let no man judge you for not bringing the offering. Read. Or in drink. Or in the drink offering. No man can judge you for not bringing that drink offering now. We're going to explain why next. Read. Or in respect of an holy day. Or in respect of the holy day. Because every holy day had what? Certain sacrifices you were supposed to bring. So now, no man can, can judge you for not bringing those sacrifices on that specific holy day. Read. Or of the new moon. No man can judge you for not doing what, what Leviticus 23 just said. On the new moon. If you don't bring them offerings, no man can judge you for that. Read. Or of the Sabbath days. No man can judge you for not bringing the, that offering on the Sabbath day. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 45 and 17. 
Let's go to the book of Ezekiel 45 and verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings. Burnt offerings. And meat offerings. Meat offerings. So no man can judge you now for not bringing the meat offering. And drink offerings. No man can judge you for bringing a drink offering. In the feast. And when? In the feast. <laughs> In the feast days. No man can judge for not bringing those things. Read. And in the new moons. No man can judge you for not bringing the offering on the new moon. Go ahead. And in the Sabbaths. On the same thing on the Sabbath day. No man can judge you for bringing, not bringing those offerings. Read. In all solemnities uh -huh. of the house of Israel. Read. He shall prepare the sin offering. Read. And the meat offering. Read. And the burnt offering. Read. And the peace offering. Read. To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So that's what it is right there. Now let's go to Isaiah 1 and verse 11. Let's get a little more. So why are these, why is Paul saying that these offerings do not need to be brought? Why can't you be judged for these things? Let's find out from the Old Testament. Read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Wait a minute. Most high God said, to what purpose is the multitude, the multitude of these sacrifices unto me? Why do y'all keep sacrificing and you're <coughs> still in sin? That's what the Most High God is saying to our people. What is the purpose of these sacrifices if you're going to remain in sin? Read. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? Read. I am full of the burnt offerings of rams. I am full of the offerings of the rams. And the fat of the fed beasts. Read. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. You see what the Most High God said in the Old Testament. He said, I don't, I don't want your sacrifice no more. He said it from the Old Testament. Psalms 40 and 6. Let's get a little more of the Old Testament. So guess what? Even in the Old Testament, it was prophesied that the animal sacrifice would be, would be done away with. 40 and 6, let's go. Psalms chapter 40, verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Wait a minute, but I thought he told Israel to sacrifice. Most High God says sacrifice and offering, offerings, I don't desire that thing from you. Read. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings hast thou not required. Uh-oh. It says thou hast not required burnt offerings and those things. Why? Because if we would stop committing the sin, we would not have to offer the burnt offerings and the, and, 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 and the sacrifices. Let's go now to Hebrews 10 and 1. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. For the law, for the law, having a shadow of good things to come. The law, the law had a shadow of good things to come. Do you think this is talking about thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, don't commit adultery? Do those have a shadow of good things to come? Or is it talking about a specific law? Let's find out. Read it again. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. Read. And not the very image of the things. Read. Can never, can never, with those sacrifices, with those sacrifices. So the law that's being being spoken of is the law of sacrifice. Read, which they offered year by year. What did we do? We made an offering of these sacrifices year by year, continually. Uh -huh. Make the commerce, the commerce there unto perfect. That. Sacrificial law could not make us perfect brothers and sisters. We still committed sin. As a result, where do we end up? In slavery on slave ships. Brothers and sisters. Verse 4. Verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. See what the Bible says, brothers and sisters. So we read it in the Old Testament and we read it in the New Testament. He's moving animal sacrifice and the offerings that go along with it. Out of the way. Colossians 2, 16 now. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Now this, the, the precepts we went through should clear up what exactly does this mean. Is Colossians 2, 16 talking about you can eat pork, 
crab shrimp lobster? No, it is not. It is saying you can now celebrate Easter and birthdays and Bugs Bunny or whatever you want to Christmas? No, it does not. Okay? It's talking about the offerings. The offerings on those specific days. Go ahead. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you. Don't let no man judge you. In meat. For not bringing a meat offering on a specific day. Or in drink. Or for not, don't let no man judge you for not bringing a specific drink offering on that specific day. Or in respect of an holy day. On any particular high holy day, no man could judge you for not bringing a meat offering or a drink offering. Or that specific offering for that specific day. Or of the new moon. No man can judge you now for not bringing an offering on a new moon. Or of the Sabbath days. No man can judge you but not bringing no offering on the Sabbath day. So I pray that it, that explains Colossians 2.16, brothers and sisters. And with that, there's a 15 minutes with the captains. We say shalom. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.